Kalado, Aki, sweet potato, yam, banana, and tomato, cabbage, spinach, avocado, chow chow, butter, bean, and cocoa, courgette, millet, plantain, rice and peas and pumpkin, mango, dates and guava, chickpeas and cassava. I'll try this position now and maybe I'll do something later. And now I want to talk to you about the wolf problem that has been surfacing in Norway for a very long time. And it actually takes the best of me, really, because some very interesting thing has been happening. And this is not in a positive way, to be honest. And many of the hunters have been hunting illegally, it means they are poachers. And some of them complain that they have to do this to sustain themselves. And uh, when I see the list of people who have been shooting wolves, I kind of get embarrassed for being from the village of Trysil. Yeah, I really do. So for the NRK news channel uh, webpage, uh, they haven't even an entire section dedicated to wolf news, which is actually quite ridiculous considering that they shouldn't have been hunting them in the first place. What is very interesting now, what's been happening now, uh, there was a different video I was supposed to show you, uh, but it has been removed for some reason, but here in the news days. There's a bit of a skirmish going on in Norway between environmentalists and the government. It has to do with a controversial decision by officials there to allow two-thirds of the country's endangered wolf population to be culled. The largest since 1911. When I say endangered wolf population, I mean it. They want to take out two-thirds of 68, cutting the number down to 22 or 21 wolves. Now, it's easy for us who aren't directly affected by these wolves to say it's crazy. The government says they're doing it to help out farmers who are losing their sheep to the predators. However, limiting the country to only 22 wolves could be too little for the population to sustain itself, says animal rights activists. It's just a surprisingly strong decision to go this far. My mum always tried to tell me it's not so black and white as you try to put it. But yes, it is quite black and white in this circumstance when it comes to wolves. They are top predators and they are very important for the ecosystem. And some of the people come with the weirdest excuses in the book. I mean, honestly, some of them actually suggest that the majority of the wolves put out have been uh, the off-breed between wolves and dogs. Well, the species is called Canis lupus, which actually basically means dog wolf. It's not a wolf dog, it's just its name. And so many try to say that, no, we shouldn't introduce new types of wolves because uh, the wolf that used to be here in Norway is already extinct. Well, this shouldn't be a problem considering that Canis lupus is actually the direct descendants of the wolf that was here before. It's actually the same species. There has been registered under 100 wolves, but it could very well be 150 wolves in this country, but just that people haven't seen them. However, can somebody guess how many hunters have signed on for this hunt? 11,000! Yes, over 11,000 hunters have actually decided that they will go out and kill the wolves. Majority of the farmers actually say that the main reason is to defend their sheep. Well, first of all, you're supposed to kill those sheep anyway, so I don't really see why it's important to protect them. And yes, I've seen extremely bad wounds being done upon sheep in the past. However, if you go to Sweden, where they have a greater population of wolves, less attacks on sheep tend to occur. And the reason is the population is big enough. And when you have a big enough population, they don't have to hunt those, those species. And a very interesting thing about sheep, they're not even from this part of the world. It's not a part of their diet. The only reason why a wolf would attack and eat sheep is because they are, the pack is not big enough. They need smaller preys to attack. And that is really what's going on. And, and this is actually stated from many people that this is the problem. But no, we're gonna send 11,000 people to take a quota that is about 16 wolves. If we send 11,000 hunters at the same time out into the forest, how the heck are you going to keep the track of how many wolves that have been shot? And I don't even need to mention Sweden to prove my point on this. Norway has had a dead decrease on amount of sheep that have been attacked. And this is due to the wolf population increasing. By shooting the wolf, you will make it even worse. 
Then how do we know where wolves tend to be? And I see a very great similarity between where the wolves are and where the moose are. This is a map from Eurasia. Here you see where the different types of moose actually tend to be. And the very fun thing about these moose populations is that there are wolves at the same places. And this is also so great. And in the United States, it works the same thing with different types of deer. This is from a different uh, documentary that was put out from the Yellowstone National Park. And I'll show you what really happened there. Well, just a part of it. Before the wolves turned up, they'd been absent for 70 years. That the numbers of deer, because there was nothing to hunt them, had built up and built up in the Yellowstone Park. And despite efforts by humans to control them, they'd managed to reduce much of the vegetation there to almost nothing. They'd just grazed it away. But as soon as the wolves arrived, even though they were few in number, they started to have the most remarkable effects. First, of course, they killed some of the deer, but that wasn't the major thing. Much more significantly, they radically changed the behavior of the deer. The deer started avoiding certain parts of the park, the places where they could be trapped most easily, particularly the valleys and the gorges. And immediately, those places started to regenerate. In some areas, the height of the trees quintupled in just six years. We all could learn something about the, the things that have been happening in Yellowstone National Park. And this is quite interesting because it shows that if you remove animal agriculture, which we don't need, which I've expressed so many times in this video production, so many people have also said that they are concerned about their children. And when, <laughs> and when they say they won't let their children out walking when there could be wolves around the corner, well, I tell people to tell me the name of every single person that they know that has been attacked by wolves and they can't give me one single name. And I was sent one article, and I found one article. One incident was in Russia, this was in 2009. The article I found was a child in India been attacked in 2015. And the amount of attacks on, on humans by wolves are one of the lowest stats that exist. I mean, there are so many other things that the more people die of, such as getting coconuts to their heads. So wolves are not dangerous. If people find fear because of wolves, they should see a doctor and get treatment for xenophobia, honestly. So stop hunting wolves and stop breathing sheeps. Go vegan and then we'll see a way better world.